Hey, this is Old Electronics Fan, and this is a Marantz, Marantz, <sighs> English is my second language, I swear, Model 2230. Now, this is something I just got. I haven't plugged it in. I haven't done anything to it. I'd like to check it out. Um, it seems to be, just at the few glances that I've uh, had of it, um, it seems to be pretty full featured. This is not a high powered unit, uh, 30 watts per channel, although I'm guessing it probably still sounds pretty nice. Um, so what have we got here? Well, that tape monitor, mono, our, oof, oof, our function control seems a little stiff there. AM, FM, phono tape, aux. Um, oh, this is uh, bass, mid, and treble, which is nice. Uh, my um, Realistic has that. I haven't seen that on some of the other. This is a lower end unit. Some of the other lower end units just have bass and treble. Balanced volume, main speaker, remote, muting. Got loudness, high filter, and low filter. Pretty full feature. Let's check out the back. Um, let's see. All right. I think we have a light here. Yeah, maybe we do. Uh, yeah, okay, maybe. Um, all right, we've got remote speaker, main speaker, sometimes I say front and rear. This has an unswitched outlet and a switched outlet. Uh, quad radio. This is set up, uh, some of you may know about the, uh, the quadraphonic sound. And it wasn't very popular and didn't last for very long. Not enough people were, were willing to pay um, the premium, I guess, that came with it. I accidentally bought, one time, uh, a 8-track tape that was designed for a quad system and definitely not usable on a stereo system, unfortunately. Um, unfortunately this does have one broken leg, which I think I can epoxy and put back together. All right, so what else we have? So this is what this is for. You can also use this, they say, for uh, white noise if you want to balance your speakers, which is interesting. There's a muting level control that you can adjust. Antenna attenuator, I guess if you're in a um, high signal area or high place where there are some really powerful signals, um, you can attenuate your antenna. I don't think I'm going to need that out here. We've got an AM antenna, ground, uh, 75 ohm, 300 ohm FM, tape out and in, aux phono. This uh, is kind of nice. Um, my Harman Kardon had this, has this too. Um, preamp out and main in. So you can pull these two. Uh, I won't go. I'm not gonna, these are just a pair of. RCA jacks tied together. So you plug this in, the preamp connects to the main amp. You pull these out and you can hook up uh, an equalizer or something else that you want to have in the middle of your signal chain. Uh, so that's kind of nice. Um, these are actually not bad. Um, these, this type of connection for the speakers you have to have a bare end of the wire, you push this in and drop it in. Um, if I'm going to have this style, where you're pushing the button, I kind of prefer this type. I kind of like it better. You see better what you're doing. Um, so there's that. Now, I want to open this up. I have not, I have no idea how long this uh, has sat unused. And I don't know, I, I know this is probably 80s vintage. I'm not sure if it's 84. I looked it up and then promptly forgot it, unfortunately. But um, if he bought this brand new, and he might have, the guy that I got it from, then um, it's probably been at least 10 years since he's used it. I would swear to that, but 
I know that uh, his health was not the best at the end, so oh, he has not passed away, but he's not entirely healthy either. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. I thought this mat would help me slide it around. I'm not sure that's a good idea or not. Well, let's flip it up on its side. Ooh, I heard something clink. What am I hearing? I think I want to take the bottom cover off. I think we got something loose in the bottom. All right, so let's just, uh, I'll show you. All right, one set of output transistors, matching pair on the other side. Fairly beefy transformer. This. Oh. Um, pretty good size transformer this thing. Nice large. Oh. That's loose. We don't want you loose. Why are you loose? Um. Interesting. I don't think anybody's had their digits in here, but as far as I know. Kind of dusty, you know, just blast it with a little canned air while I've got this in the air like this. Um, whoa. This has definitely been sitting around for a while. And I'm pretty, pretty certain that the controls are going to need help. Some cleaning. I'll do that in a bit. I might fire it up and try it first. So let's take the bottom off this, so I'm kind of concerned about that thing, her tinkling inside. Um, yeah. Alright, um, that will just flip you upside down, I guess it's best. Alright. Oh, I, that's interesting. I like how they did this. Um, on a lot of stereos, if they have a bottom cover that comes off, the screws for the feet are also either mounted to that cover or go through it. On this, they've got holes punched out in this bottom plate so that the feet stay on the stereo and the cover comes off, which is kind of nice. have to come out as well. It says to prevent electric shock, do not remove cover or back. Refer to qualified service technician. Well, I don't, I don't know if I am or not. But, um, I don't see anything running around loose inside. Let's see. inside of here. Interesting. Why four? Yeah. I'll be right back. Well, right there is a screw floating around loose inside this. Um, I don't see anything else in there. Huh. Well, I'm glad I heard it. Oh, and this, okay, and there's where it came from, right there. The screw loosened up and fell out. Hmm. I thought Moran's was pretty good quality stuff, but that's kind of dismaying. Um, hmm. Well, anyway. So. Let's put that screw back where it belongs. Check the other screws. They are loose a little bit. Oh, very loose actually. Huh. Let's check other screws. They aren't tight either. Not like I'd expect them to be. I mean they aren't falling out. 
That one's tight. That one's tight. Hmm. Well, interesting. Um, that one's loose. Very interesting. <laughs> I wonder if this was sitting on top of the speakers. <laughs> I don't know. Vibrating away. Interesting. Oh, well, that's loose too. Um, huh. Really? Well, as old as this is, I guess it's possible somebody has been in here. But there's some things that don't make sense. Oh, all right. <sighs> Where'd you go? Um, huh. The screws that were in this were really nice and tight, so I'm not sure why. Um, yeah, there's one. Oh, there you are. So I should have four screws. Okay, good. All right, um, well, I did, I was able to find, oh, there's another one in the middle, let's see how you're doing, that was also loose, that's very strange, now I know some, some of the screws, you can't see them, but some of the screws are coated with, um, a locking material, usually some kind of a paint, I guess. Um, interesting. Very interesting. That is really odd that these should all be that loose. Well, let me put this back together, and I'm not going to bore you watching me do that, so I shall return when I'm done. Um, and then, I'll probably have this hooked up and ready to try, right, ready to test. Um, but everything looks pretty good. I mean, that, that capacitor was loose. Maybe I should check the other ones too. Interesting. These aren't loose. Nope. Yes, actually more tightened that. Huh. Well, son of a gun. Okay, I put the bottom on, and while I was in there, because you can't get at these from the top, I sprayed all of these with the oxit. Um, and I've got the my transformer down. It works a whole lot better if you turn the transformer on. I'm not seeing anything. Maybe I should not have put that bottom cover on right away. Let's see. That's not humming. So it's possible my switch isn't working. Definitely getting no lights. I um, don't believe there's any fancy switches that would keep it from working. Alright, so let's take a peek at our fuse. That's bad. This is... Two and a half amps. Hmm. Yeah, our fuse is terminal. Um, well... 
<coughs> Interesting. Well, with all the fuses I've got, I don't have a two and a half. I did have a two amp. So I think this is on. It should be. Um, speakers are connected. This is down to zero. Let's see. I've got my... Up here I have uh, the transformer and I've got it set to zero to four amps to tell me whether it's drawing current or not. I would guess it would be around here, one and a half, and we'll start there. So, let's see, we've got our bulbs. Okay. The lights are lighting up. The bulbs aren't doing anything. I've got all of them on, let's see. Wait a minute. Um, but the lights are dimly lighting. My AM light is on. All the lights are there. Um, not drawing a lot of current. Let's see. Volume control. I'll turn it down this way. It's working. Okay. I always guess which way those go in, and I always guess wrong. Well, interesting. Um, I will get confused if I don't swap them. Oh, let's bring them back down. All right, so. So let's turn it back on. I really am not drawing that much current according to this. Let's see what this says. 0.2 amps, and this is saying on that scale, yeah, right about there, so they agree, interesting, uh, is this on FM, but no it's on AM, so let's go with FM. So the FM works. Um, I don't. There isn't much of an antenna. Well, these built-in antennas are not that great for AM. Um, let's go back to AM and let's go to uh, one lo lonely. There it is. That's my AM station. So. All right, let's bypass this, and this doesn't even take me a quarter of an amp. Does it tell me stuff? I better turn that down. Uh, 2.5 amp. Um, does it tell me what current it draws? I don't believe. Let's say um, 200 watts, 60 watts max. Okay. Um, it doesn't tell me. Okay, 150, 60 hertz, 220 watts. Um, 120 watts. Hmm. Doesn't seem like much. Um, Okay, well, this has the famous blue screen that people talk about, um, and uh, let's see, let's turn that on. When it comes to maintaining your engine to run that it makes a difference, let's see. Micro lubricant. Z-Max soaks into metal and it's so easy to add to your oil or gas to disperse carbon buildup in your engine. I'm assuming muting. I haven't read the manual. I got that too online. Uh, 
when you have uh, in, in, in FM stereo, let's see. Yeah, okay, that's what that is. All right, so the reason it went away when I hit the muting is it's supposed to turn that off, or turn down um, background noise. And if you have a station that's really weak, it will be treated as background noise, and it will go away when you do that. And then there's a control on the back for muting, which is what I believe is this control back here. I believe that's what that's for. Muting, min max, yes. So you can control on the back of this, which is kind of neat. Um, I didn't clean that control, but um, the um, level of muting that you got on your FM, you can control it from the back. That's kind of neat. Um, let's see. Let me check my my controls. Um, I I just want to see if they're noisy. Nothing. Okay, good. No noise. Balance. Good. I know my volume control is good. This seems to work just fine. Okay. Well, it works. I'm not sure what blew the fuse. Now, I did have a little screw roaming around in there, but with it right side up, the screw should have been away from the circuit board. So, I'm not sure... Um, these are cold, as could be. Let's see, the capacitors all look good. I didn't look at them very closely. Um, and yes, I know that bad capacitors don't always puff up on top to tell you that they're bad. But that's a quick check to see if anybody, if any of them are announcing the fact that they are no good. Um, interesting. Oh, here's all the alignment stuff that looks like hiding in that box. That's your tuner. So that's where the tuner lives. Tuning capacitor. I'm assuming that's what they use. It's old enough it should do that. Oh, there it is. Um, and then, well. Thank you. Yes. Up there there. All right. The, the uh, blades go out that way, so it's not so easy to see them. But this top looks like it unscrews here and here and then pops off. If you get, need to get in there to do anything. But it looks like, so far, everything works good. Um, I'm going to... This is my YouTube Music CD. And we're going to... Try a CD player in this. Um, okay. And it's uh, in out phono aux. I'm assuming aux is what I want. That's my control set. It says tape aux. So where's my tape? Um, Oh, in. All right, here we go. No, it doesn't matter. It should work with aux. Okay. Let's see. And we'll put you in aux.
that's interesting. I'm sure that the um, aux and the tape both work, just for the fun of it. I like to check. I like to check everything uh, to see. Huh. Well, that is, it's working. Um, I need to get a two and a half amp fuse, which is what they recommend. But the two amp fuse, well, let's see, let's look. Cool. Yeah. That one says two point. 0.27, that one says about 0.25 when I crank it up. <clears throat> so, the, it's drawing a quarter of an amp. It's putting out a lot of, of sound. I, I'm still kind of puzzled as to why that fuse went south. I, and it, it, I mean, this fuse. Um, it didn't just mildly open, it spit metal at the glass, and this fuse got hot. Um, the only thing I can think of, because this has switched and unswitched outlets on the back of this, either Um, they connected something to one of those outlets um, that had a problem or they connected something to this that drew more current than that fuse can handle. Now I can't imagine any accessory uh, I can't imagine any accessory drawing that kind of current that would cause that fuse to go bye-bye. Um, So, let's see, 60 watts is on the switched one, so that'd be half an amp. Um, yeah, I think it'd be half an amp. So, who knows? I mean, may, uh, people do some crazy things. You know, do fun things like plug your electric heater into the outlet in the back of your stereo. Sounds crazy, but... There are people out there who are crazy. Um, interesting. Yeah, so I have to order the right size fuse, but under normal conditions with nothing plugged into the back of it, I don't think it needs it. Um, um, the, let's see, this is 30... I can actually crank this at full volume and not hurt those speakers because those are rated at 50 watts. And this is only 30. Well, um, well I'm kind of glad that I... Uh, that I paid attention to that little noisemaker rattling around inside of this. What is, the other thing I think I want to do is um, I'm going to just set the cover on here and I'm going to grab a turntable and we'll play an album on this to see if the turntable works. So AM, FM works, tape and aux works. Um, the only thing I haven't checked is the the uh, Turntable, a formal input. So let's check that next. All right. Well, I just grabbed a record that I had at hand. It happened to be Bluegrass Special. Hopefully, uh, no one cares about that. In fact, all right. Um, oh, you know what? It works more better if you plug it in. It really does. Um, You would think I would remember to do that before I turn the camera on. It would have been nice. Um, okay. Oh no, don't do that.
Okay. There it is. Now, as you can well imagine, I can't play much of that. Or I will get hit. So the only thing I didn't check was tape monitor. Why? Why? Oh, why did you do that? It's supposed to go. Oh, so I'll repeat is on. I don't want repeat on. There it goes. Um, the repeat button was on and it was going to repeat my record for me. How kind of it. Um, so, um, there isn't much for me to do with this. I mean, I'm glad I took it apart and got rid of our floating screw and tightened up all the other screws. Oh, that does remind me, let me get this record off. Uh, I want to go and check the circuit boards on top because um, turn you off because um, it's really possible that the other circuit boards are as loose as the ones on the bottom. This is really I know I can't say that I've worked on a lot of vintage stereo stuff, but I have never run into um, a situation where me, the screws on the circuit boards were loose like that. And, and the only thing I can think of is that he was, and it's possible that he had this thing sitting on top of his speakers. And he was cranking them good. I mean, this is definitely capable of making lots of noise, lots of vibrations. Uh, the speakers that he had with this, which unfortunately I did not get, are, were Advents, which are nice speakers. Um, all right, get you out of the way. Okay, so. Let's take a peek. Alright, so I have they're not as tight as I would expect to be. Although they're not loose as loose as the ones on the bottom were. That's loose a little bit. This is bizarre. Um that's loose. Not too bad, but it wasn't tight, tight. Hmm. Wow. Let's check these. That's tight. That one's loose. I don't understand. Um. need a 90 degree scooter. I have one. I don't think I have it in here. That's tight enough. Um, huh. Well, those were not tight. That isn't tight. That isn't tight. This screw is actually walked out. This makes me wonder if somebody has been in here working on it. But why would all the circuit boards be loose? Unless they were trying to track down why the fuse or why it wasn't working and didn't think to check the fuse. I don't know. 
That doesn't make sense. Huh. I absolutely flabbergasted. screws, especially on Japanese equipment, it's snug enough that you have to break it loose, you know, I mean, it's not like they're hard to get off, but, but they usually aren't, you know they're still, you know they've been tightened. Pay attention to see if this is lighting up. Let's see. Um, uh, no, that isn't. Unless this is unless this is a tuning light. It's got a tuning thing there. I'll have to read the manual. See if this is just a a light. Um, let me just check. See if I can get a voltage off from the. Assuming that's going to be DC. All right. Let's see. See if I can get to it. I can see it. Don't mean I can get to it. All right. Hello. No. Um. Oh. Interesting. I don't see. That can't be C, can it? Let's find out. doesn't seem to be any voltage there. Um, and I'm pretty sure I won't have any. Um, I wonder if that's the stereo light. I wonder. If, if you're on, on AM or FM, that does not light up. But when you're on either one of those, that does light. That's why I wasn't getting any volts there. Okay. Move and learn. It looks like this thing is, is just fine, other than the fact that a good number of the screws were loose. I don't understand that, even slightly. And there's, that makes no sense. How? Most of the screws just seem to be this. Um, did you check these? Probably did. Yep, tight. Huh. Well, don't that beat all. Yeah, I mean, the black screws. Turn this off. Turn that off. 
disconnect these so they don't come out. The portion of these black screws on these circuit boards, there, 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 all of these, all of these, they weren't tight, not like I expect them to be. <laughs> and usually, usually these are, are very snug. Um, I probably can't get there from here. Um, yeah, this is darn. Um, there's screws I can't get to. So how would somebody else get to them? Yeah. I don't. Why? Now it looks like somebody's had this off because these the sealing material, the sealing material that that um, that green stuff is broken. So it looks like somebody's had this out of here for some reason. Given how old this is, it's not surprising, but... Ooh! There's a screw in there I didn't get to. Oh, that's tight. Um... I think I checked that one already. Yep. Uh... Did I check that one? I must have. Uh, let's see. Oh, can I get to that one? I don't know. I'm glad I checked because there were some other screws in here that were definitely not tight. One of the mounting, for the mounting point for this. Um, let's try. Can I get to? Can I get to this way? Yeah, it's loose. Well, I don't. I really am baffled. I've never run I've never run into this. Ah, yeah. Oops. I don't want to break that. Um can I check that one? Probably not. Yeah. Well, that one the sealant the material that seal uh, holds it in place. The paint or whatever it is, that's fine. Well, I am. Well, you saw how many. Oh, well, maybe you did. I had to go like a quarter turn, but I probably got a full turn on that screw, tightening it up. I'm pretty sure. So, at this point, I think I'm going to just put it back together. I think I've uh, tightened all the screws. Did I check you? I don't know. Yep, that's tight. That's really good and tight. Maybe I did it. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. Yeah, it's been snug. You know, it's a really good way to terminate your stereo. To have a screw fall out and land places where you don't want it to go. Um, hmm. Yeah, uh, this uh, this isn't a really high-end stereo, but as you could hear, it sounds really nice. And it's got lots of nice features to it. Um, Yeah, it's a little bit dusty, but hey, it's been around since the 80s. It can be dusty, I guess. Um, huh. Yeah, I don't see anything else that concerns me, other than the fact that, that one of these capacitors was loose. This one, I think. 
Um, and this one, this one is actually that was actually the, a ground goes to the transformer. Um, that isn't ideal. You really don't want your ground um, making lousy connections. Huh. Um, Alright, so, yeah. Um, okay. Well, I think we can call this done. Um, there's nothing more, really, that I have to do to this. Oh, this seems a little stiff. So I think I'm going to... Um, I think it... Huh. The bottom pivot point is plastic and the top one is metal. And this is adjustable. But I think I'm just going to put a little bit, a couple drops of oil on that. Um, much, of course. I don't want you doing that, dripping all over. thought it would be. They actually have um, receiver. Oh yes, gyro touch tuning. They make a big deal out of the tuning they call it gyro touch. Oh. I'm gonna put a little tiny now you might not think that just a tiny drop of oil on the plastic parts would make a difference, but it does, sometimes. Um, okay. Yep, that does make a difference. Now the other place where this could make a difference is in the uh, tuning capacitor, which is hiding in there. Um, But I think it's okay. Um, oh, no. I hate when that happens. My, the hose falls out. Okay. You don't need a lot there. By the way, for anybody who uses one of these, you've probably found out pretty quickly that if you try to shove this hose back in without the cap on, it will spit oil at you. I knew it would do that, but I actually did that to myself once, so I wasn't paying attention. Alright, there really isn't much more I need to do. I'm not sure why they call it gyro tuning. I, I, basically, it's this tuning wheel is a flywheel. It's fairly thick. It's solid aluminum, it looks like, and uh, the um, and the fact that it's weighted does make it behave a bit nicer when you're tuning. But I must confess that I've got other other um, stereos that seem to have a better better flywheel than this does.
but they seem to be pretty proud of it. Um, yeah. All right, well, I'm going to wrap up here because there really isn't much more I can do with this. Um, and for any of, any of you who have, who have not seen the Marantz 2230, this is it. This is what that is, what this is. Um, I've already mentioned that this is not a high-end unit. Um, but it's got lots of nice big fixtures. Um, other than the fact that half the screws in this thing were loose, um, this is uh, this is uh, a fairly well built unit. Um, yeah, I don't see anything at all that, that worries me and that I should be concerned about. Um, nice. We've got a little tr pair of transistors in here, some driver transistors. Uh, with uh, nice little heat sinks on them. I mean, it looks like it's well made. Um, it shows um, when you compare this to other high-end units, you can see the difference. But um, I mean, the fact that I I'm pretty sure that this was not I'm pretty sure that this was not. Um, Let's see. How do I get this? The, the person who owned this wasn't big on taking care of stuff. I mean, the fact that this is in decent shape, fairly decent shape, does not have to do with the fact that he, he uh, went out of his way to do nice things for it. Um, they basically just sat somewhere and out of harm's way, which is probably why it's in good shape. Because none of the, so I've seen some of these with the corners bent. Um, one thing I did run into, I fixed it. Well, I had it, had it, um, had it, had this pit panel off. Right here, this panel was bent in, and this was bent out. So, since since my repair method is would be a little bit noisy, I didn't um, show you that. But it was bent here, it was caved in here, so I took it and straightened it out and put it back in. Who knows how that happened? Again, it's, you know, let's see, what is that, uh, 40 years old, thereabouts, depending on whether it's an 83 or, or newer. So, yeah. All right, well, I'm wrapping this up uh, and calling it done. Now I know that because these capacitors are as old as they are, uh, that there's always that risk of failure. If I measure uh, an electrolytic and the ESR is really healthy and the value of the capacitor reads where it's supposed to, I am inclined to leave them alone. Now there are others who believe that uh, you really should just replace them all. Um, and I don't have an argument with that. Um, but um, I am not so inclined to do that. If I were dealing with tube stuff, with everything I've seen with them, um, I do tend to just go ahead and replace the electrolytics in those, uh, they usually they are usually not healthy, so that's an easy decision to make. But with the the, with the, the um, more modern transistorized stuff, you know, it seems like there was a period where electrolytics were really really good. I know there are there are, depending on what capacitors were used, um, who made the the electronic device. Um, you are going to find failed capacitors. In fact, a lot of Japanese caps do fail. But for whatever reason, the, th the things that I've encountered, I just haven't had any trouble with it. Maybe someday that's going to bite me, I don't know. But um, at this point, though, it seems like um, those capacitors are holding extremely well. 
So, hard to say what the future holds, but for me, for right now, especially if they test out really good, I'm, I'm inclined to not bother with them. All right, well, even though this, this uh, radio sounds good and the um, the brain. There's no humming, there's no indications just looking at the capacitor that it's, there's bad things happening. Um, I still want to be sure. Well, let me back up. I have, let's see, how many transistor stereos do I have? Uh, my realistic. Um, Let's see, I got a Panasonic Harman Kardon. I got this one that's four. I have another one that I haven't worked on at all. Um, <clears throat> so um, and none of them on, on on none of them have I ever replaced the electrolytics. Now when I work on something I do look at things like, well, are the tops starting to swell? Now these don't have the little X's these don't have the little X's on them uh, that a lot of them have, <clears throat> which allows them to break right here, so you may not see it there. Now that's not to say that a capacitor that isn't swelling is good. It's not that saying. But I look to see if there's any indication that the electrolytes are starting to fail. If I see one that's going bad, then I'm going to want to check all of them to see how they're doing. Now, the the thing that I'm about to do is I'm going to check to see how much voltage there is on these capacitors because this won't like voltages on there. It will blow up. It'll be very bad. Um, 1.2 volts. Okay. Uh, so. 0.3 and this is 0. I don't really know that I have to do this, but I don't I don't really want voltage on there. Um, even if it's only a volt or two, rather it didn't have any. If I can get it down there, we'll see. All right, fine, be that way. Let's go. Um, all right, so let's check this. Now let's put that down there for a minute. Capacitors can millivolts, millivolts. Okay, good. We can call that fine. Put this on. Got to zero it. Zero. Now, that's not good. It's supposed to stay together. Zero. All right, good. So, let's check and... Uh, which one? Okay, I'm assuming the ones that are painted black are negative. Um, and this probably won't tell me what I want to know. But let's just see. Yeah, that's probably what it is. We shall see. Let's go to... Um, yeah. It's the only thing I don't like about this particular capacitor tester is that you have to get these little clips on things and you can just touch it on there and you can do it. Come on. Really? That's pretty amazing. Um, come on. Get on there. 
Wow. 0.031, and that's at 2200 at, what did I say, 16 volts? Is that what it was? Uh, 63 volts, okay. That's more like it. I thought that was a little wall. 63 volts, 2200. Alright. So looking at my chart, 0 0.1 is what that should be. This is reading 0 0.03. I'd say that was an overachiever, <laughs> which is fine. And let's see. Okay, I can't. Oh. By hooking there, I didn't really hook across the capacitor because there's a resistor hiding there and I didn't see it. But it should still. Millivolts, we're good. Alright. And. Um, so much fun. Let's see, can we get in there? Point oh two one. That's nice. Okay. Um, there's nothing wrong with these. And these are original, I'm pretty sure. Good grief. That's a 4700. 0.002. 4700, uh, well, if it's the same voltage, it's 0.1. What are you? I look at these things and then I forget. I didn't even write it down. And that is 80 volts. Okay. But I think all across the, the line, all of these are 0.1 all the way across, no matter what voltage they are. So between here and here, 0.1. So that's just fine. So I, this, I think this is the first time I've ever measured the uh, filter caps on the power supply of one of these older radios. And this is at least 40 years old. Um, I can remember my memory these days. I can't remember if this was a an uh, early 80s vintage, or if this is a um, um, 70s. Well, just for the fun of it, what are you? You are another Elna 220. Let's check this out. I'm pretty sure there's no voltage on there, but well, I made the mistake one time of connecting my um, Faster meter without checking to see if there was voltage on it, and it went kablooey right, rather satisfactorily. So it's not a good thing to do. Um, did not make me happy that I had toasted my test equipment, but um, it was a lesson learned. Expensive lesson, but I don't know, it's expensive. Thankfully, it wasn't horribly expensive, but um, 0 0.050. And this is, I see you were, I just read it. I think we got 50, oh, 220, 220, 50 volts. 220, 50 volts. And that says 0.2, and this is, oh, we aren't getting good connection, that's what our problem is, 0.05. So that's, I, the Elna brand seems to be very good, um, interesting, and I don't recall that brand, I don't, I wasn't, I'm not familiar with that brand either, but whatever, what, it seems like that was a good quality product, because um, this is way, way lower uh, ESR than the specs call for. So I guess I'm going to put this back together. Um, I realize that you know I haven't been checking the electrolytics on these because they just they seem to, for the most part, especially the power supply 
bunch of lights. They seem to be fine. Um, but that's something I will be testing in the future. And these things are getting old, so um, probably makes sense to do that. This I, I'm glad I did this. This was very interesting to me, just to try to find out whether or not these were a matter of concern. Like I said, I haven't been checking them because they don't seem to fail. And I've got my realistic. I've never tested those. And that's in 1984, I think. And um, like I said, I've never tested them. It, it, I, I see nothing wrong with it. it. It has no hum whatsoever. It's clean. So I'm guessing that... Um, that one will probably give me similar results to this. I am kind of amazed these are actually better than the, the specs call for as far as ESR. So, good quality stuff. So, I'm going to put this back together and move on to the next thing. Um, oh, the uh, for those of you who may who want to know, these are detented. All of the controls, the, the tone controls are detented. But the bass is not, and the vol or balance is not, and the volume is not. Um, some stereos have the volume, have detents on the volume. This one doesn't. Just in case you were interested. All right. Well, thanks for watching to this point, and I hope you found it interesting. There really wasn't a lot for me to do other than. Well, finding a loose screw, replacing a, a pop fuse, and tightening a bunch of screws. Pretty bizarre.